bring it over here now. She bought me quick and mixing up the different products Kiss your problems under my liquor bottle and gin to make a gender generalize the women that I'm sitting next to Whisper, oh my god, I think I seen them on a My type, but I like if y'all like what I like Then my night is fine night, but we get this started up Ooh, you got the curb thing, let your curl hang Girlfriend, look like everything I'm ever good tomorrow But you just wanna hang with the A-list I was going guys, so today we are doing a little bit of an instructional type video So I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I increased my bench press over the past year like even like the past five months how i've ridiculously uh increased my bench press by like literally 50 pounds in the past five months and uh what i've done to kind of refine my form my technique so here's like my biggest my top tips um and little tricks for bench press that i use and that a lot of other powerlifters use to increase their bench press so i used to bench press just like a bodybuilder and i would bounce it off my chest i'm using all kinds of momentum forms all messed up zero leg drive um, and I fixed everything up. So again, this thing is gonna take time for everyone to work on and get better at it. And first off, this is like in powerlifting, you're trying to move the most amount of weight possible. So for the people that say, you know, you shouldn't arch your back, all these people that comment and they're like, you should be benching with a flat back and stuff like that, that's not true. But in this case, I'm trying to bench as a powerlifter, lift the most weight amount possible. So take this with a grain of salt. If you're not trying to do powerlifting, you don't necessarily have to do everything that I'm talking about. One of my biggest, Things that I would talk about doing on bench is with any of your warm up sets to your working sets, you want to make it look all the same. You want the tempo to be the same. You want your tightness to be the same. You want uh, your your form to be exactly the same. So even though obviously 135 is like very very lightweight for me, um, you're still going to want to make your warm up sets look like your working sets because you want to get those motor pathways down. And the more you do that same pathway you're gonna get more used to it, it becomes a habit for you. And like I said, you wanna be as consistent as possible with the bench, uh, with any lift. You want everything to be consistent. So in this, warming up consistently is gonna to lead to more consistent working sets, more consistent maxes, and you're not gonna miss as many reps. I'm putting on my uh, Olympic lifting shoes right now. I use these for squats, um, but I also like them for bench too, because it gives you like a little bit of incline. And so I like pressing off these. They're really, uh, really compact. First, very first, our second tip that I'm doing here is uh, setting your grip here. So this is the very first thing I do is I kind of put my feet up on the bench here and I get my grip all nice and set up because that's the very first thing I'm worried about. So for me, I go with my middle finger on the ring right here. Um, you can kind of go wherever you want. The max width you can do in powerlifting is index finger on the ring. Um, so I do middle finger on the ring because it feels more natural to me. I used to come in all the way as far as like inside of the ring with my pinky finger. And you essentially, the more you move your grip out, the shorter the range of motion is going to be. So in powerlifting, if you have shorter range of motion, obviously you should be able to lift more weights. Um, so I did move my grip width out a little bit. And also, if your grip is too far in, you're going to be using more tricep. You're also going to have your forearms kind of tilting in at the bottom, which you're not going to be pushing in a straight line then. You kind of want your forearms to be perpendicular to the ground. If you have a super narrow grip right now, I suggest definitely trying to move it out a little bit because I think it could definitely help you. Limit the range of motion and you're gonna utilize like more chest. Then once you have the grip width set here, um, I'm gonna talk about exactly how you place your hand on the bar. So a lot of people will come back, just get in the wrong position here, and they just press it up like this, like you'd be holding like a deadlift or a squat or something like that. The best way to do it, in my opinion here, is you wanna basically drive the bar as much as you can into the heel of your hand, like right into the bottom of that palm. You're gonna have some pressure against your thumb here because the bar is gonna be literally back as far as you can. Because if you're like this, you have a lot of room for your wrist to rotate, and that force, instead of going straight through here, it comes up here, and then there's a little bit of, uh, the force The force isn't traveling straight through your forearm yeah. and your hand here, so. It's like producing a lot of torque on your hand. You're gonna have a lot of torque on your hand, and not as much force is going into the bar. So, if you take this bar, and you force it more into the heel of your hand here, that force is going straight through your uh, forearm into the bar, there's no torque and you're just like literally pressing straight to the bar with all your force. I think a lot of people here, that's gonna help you a lot, and uh, it's gonna give you a lot more force in the bar. Stability. Yeah, a lot, a lot more stability with the bar. It might even help you increase your bench like immediately. All right, so now we're gonna talk about exactly my, uh, my setup on the bench itself. So now that we've got our grip all set up and everything, I like to keep myself as close to the rack as possible when I'm lifting off. So whether I have to do a self lift or I have someone lifting off for me, I don't want to have to take the bar from back here and pull it all the way up here because you're going to lose all kinds of tightness. Set myself where I want to be, which is I want to basically be able to lift the bar straight off the rack and just be able to bench from there. So you're going to have to kind of play with it a little bit because you don't obviously want to hit the racks on the way up with the bench, um, with the bar. So you're going to play around with it a little bit. It takes some time, but I'll show you guys kind of what I do here. So I have myself 
nearly right underneath the bar. So I should be lifted straight up right into a bench. So anyways, I'll do it one more time for you guys. But if you saw, I basically lifted the bar up and I only had to move it forward like literally two inches. I see some people that go to the gym, they lift the bar and they have to lift it like a whole foot from their head. The problem when you're re-racking it, it's also a problem when you're unracking it because like I said, you're getting all tight like this, then you completely change your positioning and you just like retighten yourself and everything. So yeah, if you're going for a very heavy single, you're going for your max right here, and you have to lift the bar from here all the way up to here, that's gonna first take energy out. You're losing all kinds of tightness, and which is gonna lead to energy loss too. Um, so if you can just lift the bar straight up, straight back down, then you're limiting all that. Everything's more consistent, and you just keep that tightness the whole time. One of the most important parts of this lift is leg drive. So where you got your feet set right here, it depends on the federation that you compete in. If you do compete, um, if you're in USAPL, you have to um, keep your feet flat on the ground the whole time. So I'm gonna keep my feet flat, and personally, in my opinion, that's the most consistent way to do it. Um, but I like to kind of set my feet up so that I have like tension throughout my body, so that my legs constantly have are pushing against the ground. I don't want them too far behind me because then I'm kind of pushing off my toes. I don't want them too far in front of me because then I kind of lose that as well. So I want them pretty much like straight up and down perpendicular with the ground and I'm pressing through my midfoot slash heel area and I'm keeping that constant tension the entire time. simultaneously setting up my back, my arch, while I'm setting up my foot positioning. So for the arch, most important part, the first thing you do is you're gonna take your, your scapulas, which is your shoulder blades, and you're gonna retract them basically down and back at the same time. So you're basically squeezing this as hard as you can with your traps and your shoulder blades, back and down at the same time, squeezing that together as hard as you can, like I said. Um, so I have that, I'm pinning my traps into the bench as much as I possibly can. So like right here, I am, got my, Got my hand positioning set. I got the bar pushing through the heel of my hand right here. I'm getting my um, my feet set up as I'm driving my traps together. So foot positioning is going on at the same time. And I'm driving my traps into the bench. So now here, a normal a normal bencher would just kind of go like this. They have their upper back tight, right? And their their butt is all the way down here. But traps are all tight. Now I'm taking my lats and literally the, your lats, your, like the biggest muscles in your back, you're taking them, doing the same kind of thing. You're literally squeezing your lats together as much as you possibly can, trying to create this arch. Like I, a good cue that I have is I'm literally trying to take my butt and like touch my upper back with it. So I'm trying to touch my butt to my traps. So I'm taking this, squeezing my lats together, squeezing my entire back heel. You should feel like a really tight squeeze in the mid of your back. I am, I'll show you guys right now, I'm pulling myself with the bar, I'm pulling myself into the bench and uh, getting my chest up as much as possible, driving my butt back towards my traps, if that makes sense. So, so like the entire time, throughout the, throughout the bench, say I'm doing a five rep max or something like that, every single rep, I wanna have my chest up and back as much as possible. It's kinda like you're trying to throw your sternum, you're trying to keep it up towards your face. Like you're trying to create like a decline with this. So you don't wanna let your chest sag at all. Like you wanna have this chest up as much as possible, and by squeezing your entire back together, your lats together, your chest is gonna stay up. So you wanna squeeze as much as possible, keep that chest up, and it's gonna provide a better arch for you to press off of, much more reinforced, and uh, it's literally gonna limit the range of motion, you're gonna be much stronger with the bench press. So, this is what we're doing right here. So I got the traps tightened, traps are tightened right there, taking them into the bench. Now, I squeeze the lats down and back together, bring my butt as close to my upper back as possible, and setting my butt down. Now I have my legs secured, leg drive is secured, and I can lift it off. <clears throat> That's the most arch I've ever seen you do. <laughs> All right, so next step, we're gonna talk about touch point here. So touch point on your chest. Back in the day, I used to do the whole bodybuilder style, 
didn't have any arch or anything. You used to bring it down upper chest basically. So now that we have this big arch form, we have the whole arch reinforced and everything, uh, you're gonna wanna touch the highest point on your chest basically. So when you're fully arched, you can kind of see on my chest where the bar kind of touched was like right here, right? So when I'm fully arched, that's gonna be like kind of the highest point right there. Um, so that's gonna limit the range of motion. Obviously, if you're moving the weight through less range of motion, you can move more weight. What we're looking for here too is you wanna keep your wrists and your elbows stacked the whole time. So I'll kind of show you really quickly if I was to get all set up and I brought the bar down to where I normally would, my wrists and my elbows are perpendicular to the floor. So if I bring it too far down, which sometimes if you misgroove it, you bring it too far down, see so your wrists and your elbows are no longer stacked on top of each other, you're gonna lose all kinds of leverage on that. Um, Producing a lot more torque. You're, you're not gonna have nearly as much force in the bar. So you need to keep the wrists and elbows stacked all the time um, on that touch point. So. <clears throat> I literally try to hit the same exact spot every time. You want to be as consistent as possible. I've seen some good, strong benchers that can't be consistent with their touch point on their chest. They end up missing reps and stuff because it's not consistent. They hit too low, too high, whatever it may be. Hit the same exact spot every time. That's why it's crucial when you're warming up. Hit that same touch point throughout all your warm-ups. Keep everything the same throughout all your warm-ups. So when you get to these sets right here, you can hit that same spot consistently and not worry about missing reps. All right, so on to the last couple of things that I've been doing like over the past couple of months to improve my bench is like at the top of every single rep, take a huge breath like into my um, into my stomach. I'm taking a big breath, tightening everything, tightening my abs. Um, so then when I do bring the bar down, I have a lot more stability. It's gonna keep my chest up. If I have that big breath, I'm keeping everything tight. It's not gonna fall back down. Um, and I exhale once I get to the top of the rep. So like I said, with this touch point, when I come down here, naturally your arms, your elbows are gonna tuck slightly, which is good. I wouldn't say a lot of people are like, oh, you need to have a 45 degree angle on your tuck. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you hit that touch point. You still want necessarily have your arms like flared out to the sides of that because likely the bar is gonna come up until like here then. So you're gonna wanna tuck your elbows slightly and we're pressing, we're pressing the bar up and back at the same time into that same position that we started at. So, um, and then likely before, Usually before you rack it, bring it up, control it, lock out the elbows, and then rack. So we're not out of control, um, just throwing it back into the rack. I used to do that too. I would bounce it off my chest, and then I just throw it right back into the rack without even checking, you know what I mean? Everything's consistent, everything's very um, precise. Control. Everything's very controlled and precise. So we're coming down, especially if I'm pausing, pause, up, lock out, hold it for a second, then rack, no bouncing, no, uh, no room for error. So that's basically everything I've done to improve and refine my technique over the past six months or so. Um, I'll go ahead and throw up a video from five, six months ago of my bench press. And you know, I was still pushing decent weight, but you could see in the video that <laughs> there's a lot that needed to be worked on. And still, like I said, there's still a lot of stuff that I need to be worked on, constantly improving form and technique, but show a video of now what it looks like and it looks way, way better. And uh, everything's more consistent. The reps are more consistent for me, which means that when I go to hit that heavy weight, I'm gonna hit that a higher percentage of the time, uh, which is really, really good. So it's all about, it, it takes time to do all this stuff. It's taking me five months to kind of get closer and closer to that. Every day I'm kind of working on making my arch better, stronger, higher, limiting the range of motion. So um, all kind of things to look into. Take some of these tips and try to implement them into your own bench press. Um, I literally have increased my bench like 50 pounds in the past five, six months. And that's simply due to, I mean, obviously gaining some strength. There was some strength gained, but huge improvements to technique. So you could see the difference between those two videos. I showed you guys and uh, like just start implementing some of those into your, into your own bench press and see what you can do, man. Not everyone's got to be a power lifter, but you can implement some of these things, keep yourself safer and also lift more freaking weight. So we had Kyle basically doing the same thing. I'll put a video up of Kyle doing it him compared to when he first started, when he had a crappy like 185 bench, um, to now when he's in like 250, 255, stuff like that. Yeah. We'll throw that up on the screen too. It's all about improving the form every single day, so. Maybe throw like 270 on the bar and me like hold it up there. The biggest issue that I see when it comes to bench press is 
people just don't keep that tightness throughout the entire rep. I see a lot of people, you'll see the NFL players in the combine and stuff, sudden leg drive at the bottom, shooting their hips up, bouncing the bar off their chest, racking it right away. You should be like a machine. Literally only your arms are moving. Everything else is staying super, super tight. Like I said, you're squeezing your back as tight as you possibly can, trying to reinforce that arch the entire time. The only thing that's moving is your arms, touches your chest, it's coming back up, and you're racking it. Constant tension with the floor with your feet, glutes are squeezed, abs are squeezed, big breath, um, everything's tight, and that's the most important part of it because, like I said, you see a lot of these NFL players, you see some guys in the gym who are not keeping tightness in the rest of their bodies, and it just kind of leaves room for, for more errors, inconsistency, and potential injuries and stuff too because... I mean, think about it. If you're not as consistent with your bench, you hit too low one time, too high one time, you just end up completely misgrooving. Um, it it opens up a lot of a lot of room for injuries and stuff like that. So if you're able to just limit the motion down to literally as simple as it can be, moving your arms while keeping everything else tight, you're gonna be good to go. You're going to be a lot stronger. You're gonna have a really solid base to press off of. And uh, your bench has definitely increased along with you just progressing with your strength gains and stuff. Like a lot of these tips, I'm telling you, like <laughs> you can just use these, refine the technique and just be bench is highly, highly technical. So you can get a lot of pounds, add a lot of weight off of just refining that technique. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoy. If you guys want to see more like tips and tricks kind of videos like this, uh, things that I do, um, you know, whether squat, deadlift, any other exercise, stuff like that. I do like doing these type of videos. It's something different from just like a normal type of vlog. So yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Gay, I've been damn all these stars on my head. Okay, it's cool, keep these eyes, keep me fresh. Chase sent this through with me, something I can hit. You know I'm James and